Welcome to making a Stuart model steam plant and this one is part 11. Boilers to the left of me and boilers to the right, assembling a 504 boiler in order to plan the layout of the steam plant. The 504 boiler that I'm actually going to use is a brand new one and this one was bought from Stuart models. I've left this one safely on the shelf awaiting final assembly. Because the customer really did send me a lot of parts, these are all Stuart boilers. The one I'm writing on is a Stuart 501 boiler, which is quite badly dented. The 504 boiler on the shelf is the perfect one. Most of the other ones are quite old, and not very badly damaged really. Look at the right hand side of the picture, you will see three 504 boilers, and all of them have minor damage. To plan the layout, I picked the worst 504 boiler, and here I'm hitting it with a hide-faced hammer. And if any viewers are horrified by me hitting this pressure vessel with a hammer, please don't worry, just sit back, relax and breathe. I am going to perform a hydraulic test on every one of these boilers before they're put into service. Although this process looks quite brutal, it really isn't. And slowly the boiler returns to a recognisable shape. Making a success of this job is all down to knowing where to hit the boiler and how hard to hit it. Here I'm using some scotch Brite to clean up the area I've been working on and the dint has almost disappeared. I can't believe it. I guess it's all down to beginner's luck. I polished up one end of the boiler using the polishing spindle and as you can see it's not looking too bad. Amongst the large collection of parts that arrive from the customer in America are quite a few of these 504 side panels. This is the worst set. And once again before anyone comments, the white stuff on the inside of these side panels is not asbestos. What you can see are the remains of the modern heat insulation board that was stuck to the side panels. Time to work on the cast iron mountings. These look like new ones. The castings haven't been fettled and they look quite rough. So I think it's a good time to just have a go at this. After introducing the casting to my belt sander, it looked like this after a very short while. But I couldn't really get to this bit, so I used a file. Successful filing is a bit of an art and you do need to practice. You also need to select the correct file. This one's not too coarse and not too fine, it's just right. And in no time at all, the casting was a lot better. With these old 504 boilers, it is really important to make sure that you level off the feet so that the boiler sits perfectly flat on any surface. In my box of 4BA machine screws, I found some steel 4BA machine screws. When I finally assemble the boiler, I will use the brass ones that were supplied with the kit. When 504 boilers were first designed and the world did not know about the dangers of asbestos, they were designed to have two pieces of asbestos board on the inside of each of the side plates. I'm only assembling this boiler to test the layout of the steam plant. Here I'm flattening yet another part of the side that I missed. As I mentioned, the design encompasses a gap for some heat insulation material. But because I'm assembling this boiler without the heat insulation, I'm having to shorten the screws where they go into the part near the boiler. That's only at one end though, for the rest of the boiler I'm using the screws at full length. A quick tighten of the grub screw holds the chimney in place, so that's basically the boiler assembled. Not perfect, but it doesn't need to be. The assembly for the 500 and 501 type is quite different to the 504. I'll be making some videos shortly showing how I put them back together, and this will include painting. In this clip you can see a really bad problem with the feet of the cast iron boiler plates. I haven't cleaned this one up and it's very different to the other one. With the feet left in this condition, the mounting lugs could easily crack when you bolt the boiler in place onto the baseboard. The feet need to look like this. Perfectly flat, then there's no chance of fracturing the mounting lugs. Now for the fun part of the job, here are a couple of pieces of A4 card. I'm going to use this to find out what size of baseboard I require and test the layout of the components. First of all, I place the boiler onto one of the pieces of card, not too close to the edge. It's always a good idea to leave some room around the edge. This is the water tank, which will go about here, but it needs turning round so the pipe's in the right place. The hand pump that I've placed on the right hand side of the boiler 
has a large ram for the physical size of the pump. This is a double 10 V, I need to find a good position for this. There are lots of pros and cons as to where to put this, I'll go into them in detail. This is the Stuart S50 that's going to drive the PM Research Generator, but it doesn't look good this way around. Actually, this is not the one that's going to be used. I'm going to send this back to the customer on his request. He's sending me another one from some steam plant that he has. But physically, it's identical in shape and size, so I can use this for the plant layout. The S50 and the Dynamo, I think, need to be in this position. I need to make an exhaust condenser oil trap, and it needs to be the same physical size as the water tank. I cut it to size on the bandsaw, and you may think it's a little bit shorter, but don't forget it has to have feet on it and a lid. Here's the story so far. I think I've got the position for the S50 and the Dynamo. The next thing to look at are the two street lamps. I removed both of the Christmas tree bulbs, and I intend to use an entirely different type of light bulb. This is the position I propose for the lamps. They will be painted green, by the way. They won't be bright red. Now I need to find the best place to position the Stuart Double Ten V. I don't want it this way round. If you open the drain cocks, it would splurge water and oil all over the S50. Cylinder drains like these are not really essential on very small steam engines, and if you pipe these cylinder drains using very thin copper pipe to like a grate on the board, as I've seen many people do, in my opinion, it can look very over fussy. I do intend to fit a drainage grate to the baseboard when I make it, and I'm going to machine the baseboard so I have piping built into it. In this clip I'm making small adjustments. I am always conscious of not making a steam plant that is too stupidly large and ostentatious. This clip shows all of the components mounted in the position that I think they should be in, and this is the size that I need to cut the finished baseboard to and that is 16 and a half inches square. Not too big and not too small, with plenty of room for neat pipe runs. I thought I'd try the lamps in a different position, but no, I went back to the original. That way they're both shining on the centerpiece, which is the double 10 V. They're actually a little bit bent. In this clip, I'm trying to straighten them out a bit. The wiring for the lamps will be hidden in the baseboard. In my opinion, this is the best layout. I may move the boiler a little bit to the right to finally balance the layout, but when I look at this layout, it is very agreeable. Don't forget, I will be fitting reversing gear to the Stuart Double Ten V, so that will look quite good with it in the foreground. Also, it makes it easy to operate. When designing a plant, you have to think ahead. You need to allow space for the pipe runs, and the respective parts of the engine need to be, generally speaking, facing where the pipes are going to go. Here's the box of parts for the reversing gear. And in this clip, you'll have to use your imagination, but the reversing gear will take centre stage fitted to the Stuart Double Ten V. I'm building this steam plant for a customer in the USA, who is also one of my Patreon supporters, so he'll be seeing this, and I'm sure he'll let me know if it's agreeable. This is more or less how I think this steam plant should look. The boiler does need moving to the right, so that the black part of the boiler mounting is between the condenser and the water tank. Also, the dynamo needs to move to the right to be in line with the lamp and the tank. Please be aware that if the customer doesn't like this layout, it will change, because the customer is always right, and this is just my opinion. That's it for this one. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.